In Too Deep was a song that my good friend, colleague Bud Greenwood had written. We'd originally demoed this song on an 8-track. You know, the overall keyboard parts, the drum parts and the bass part he'd sort of put together. And I was only really left with having to do the guitar solos and bits and pieces. So the initial song when we first demoed it sounded absolutely huge. It had the big oversampled drums and massive keyboard pads. And I put some slide guitar on it and then a sort of big solo at the end. So we took this into the record company initially and it was definitely a track that was up for getting recorded. We started recording this track at Jacob's studio in Surrey. It was a residential studio that had been used by many bands at the time. And fortunately we'd managed to pick up a really good drummer to help us out with the session. It was a drummer called Graham Broad. He really had just a, a powerful approach to this track and really gave it, I thought, a lot of what it needed. Initially we'd used sample drums, but then we thought, you know, it's probably going to lack something when we get into the studio environment, record it as a band, really needs some real playing, real drum playing on it. So just being in the same live room with Graham and trying to play along with them, you really get the sense of the the power in the track and he really belted those drums and we were so sort of <laughs> quite put back by the sound of what was coming out. Um, but, you know, it was great fun to play along to that. So the track got recorded and in the initial demo there was a huge big long solo at the end which the plan was just to continue with that approach and do a big solo at the end and it was you know supposed to be a really grand scale. So I worked quite a bit on the solo at Jacob's Studios. There was a little sort of live area at the back of the control room it was almost just like a little kind of shack or places where they stored equipment. So I would go in there in the evenings and just kind of work on the solo and just kind of tighten it up, made sure I knew what I was going to do in the performance when it came to do the take on it. So I can remember a few dark evenings in there working away. It was a bit sort of creepy, this place. Uh, again, another studio that was... This one was haunted, but <laughs> I'll save that story for another time. So it sort of creeped me out a little bit, but I was working away. I worked away at the solo for a couple of nights, two or three nights, just to get it right. When it came to recording it, the engineer at the time was quite unwell and couldn't really attend the session. He went up, I think, to his room. So I was just left with the tape op. I says, yeah, that's fine, just go ahead, record your solo. So this was late one evening, it was only me and the tape op who were in the control room at the time. So we just kind of went for it. He pressed the record button and then I just, I think I was just ready to go on this solo and I just recorded it. Um, I think I... I had about three takes on it and ended up using, I think, the third one. Yeah, so it came out really well. It was a kind of, it was quite a wild solo. So it reminded me of a kind of Neil Sean type solo. Used to love his playing um, from Journey. And, you know, it was sort of parts of it more melodic. There was other parts that were really quite fast, but Listening to the drum track and some of Bud's, you know, amazing bass, it just kind of followed the fills right of the faster bits. It just sounded incredible when we were listening to it back. Anyway, we left, sort of left it like that. When we came to mix the track, of course the record company 
had got different ideas about the song. They felt like, you know, a big, long, fast solo might not be appropriate for the type of album we were trying to do. They were probably trying to steer us a little bit more kind of pop rather than, you know, maybe what we were capable of, which was a lot more rock style, a bit more heavier. We were very capable musicians and we could do all that kind of stuff quite well. So, unfortunately, the record company had told the mixing engineer to fade the solo out, keep it down low at the end, and then just fade the track. So all this hard work and all this, what we thought was pretty good playing, was kind of lost. We put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it. I'd played the solo a few times live, and it always went down great. Um, the biggest audience that I'd played it to was at the Astoria in London. So that was, I don't know, maybe about 1,500 plus people, I suppose. And that gig had gone well. When we did that particular solo and finished the track like that, you know, the whole place kind of came to life. The audience erupted at that point. And we thought, oh, we're getting a reaction now. You know, so it was, it was a kind of high point, possibly. Anyway, like I said, unfortunately, the solo never made it to the track. It was faded out too early. And I don't think we ended up releasing the song anyway. So it's in the video. I've dug out a rough mix of it and just kind of put it out there. It was made up of sort of two bits that were quite fast. The other part was very melodic. The faster bits were sort of hammering on and then I just kind of a fast run. I'll just kind of show you roughly what it was I did. I don't remember exactly, it was a while ago, but the idea, the intent of it. <laughs> 